Hey everyone, we are back from the Maldives and have been making all our travel videos from it. In this one, we will tell you a few tips from our 6 day experience there. We have all together 12 tips for you, which are Atoll and Island, Private and Public Island, Weather, Visa, Drone and Recording, Currency, ATM, Money Exchange, Religion, Bikini Beach, Cats and so on, Foot Washing, Transportation, Cost, Food and the Essentials. While traveling to the Maldives, it is good to know that it isn't your regular country. The Maldives is an archipelago and is formed by 26 atolls, along with a few islands and isolated reefs. The definition is that an atoll is a ring-shaped island, including a coral rim then encircled a lagoon. There may be coral islands or xei on the rim. When you look at an atoll, it's actually more like a bunch of islands and a lagoon forming all together a massive shape in the ocean. In total, the Maldives have 1192 islands across those 26 atolls. And did you know that the Maldives is the smallest country in Asia? In the Maldives, we often mention local islands and private islands. Local islands are public islands that are managed directly by the government and where you are free to go without any restriction. For our trip to the Maldives, we opted to visit those islands. Private islands are islands where a private hotel is located and where you cannot go unless you are a guest of the hotel. For example, we stayed on Digo Island, which is a local and public island. At the tip of this island, there was a sandbank that connects Digura to another island, where a private hotel named Lux is located. While we could walk on the sandbank, we were not allowed to enter the Lux Island. The Maldives is a year-round destination, with hot and sunny conditions throughout the year, temperature remaining reasonably consistent, with high ranging between 28 degrees Celsius and 32 degrees Celsius and lows rarely dropping beneath 24 degrees Celsius. There are mostly two seasons in the Maldives. November to April, the dry season. It's the peak season and most resorts run from January to April, which is also the driest time of the year. The conditions are optimum for a dreamy Maldives holiday. May to October, the wet season. During this time, there is a higher risk of rain. However, heavy rains tend to be short with the peak rainfall being typically in June. Therefore, it is mostly recommended to travel to the Maldives between January and April. We traveled to the Maldives end of March and we had mostly a really great weather. We only got one cloudy day and some rainfall, either in early morning or at night. I am French and Tina is Serbian, so when we travel, we are not always facing the same visa requirements. To travel to the Maldives, However, it was convenient for both of us. We started organizing our trip to the Maldives two weeks before our departure date. Once our plane and our first hotel book, we just went online on imuga.immigration.gov.mv and did our travel declaration. It is quite easy to do, take 5 to 10 minutes and is completely free. Know that all travelers are required to submit the traveler declaration within 96 hours to the flight time during arrival and departure. If like us, you are traveling with a drone, you may be wondering if you can fly it freely or not in the Maldives. First of all, we traveled to the Maldives through Dubai, and we didn't have any trouble in our transit nor in Malay airport. One of the first things we asked when we arrived in the Maldives was, can we fly a drone? We got a super straight answer, yes. and that there weren't any restriction about flying a drone in the Maldives. We then flew our Mini 3 Pro on the public island of Mafushi and Digora. In fact, we even saw locals flying their drones while searching for whale sharks. One thing though, we saw online that some private islands with luxury resorts are sometimes limiting the drone flying area to certain parts of the island. So if you stay on such island, be sure to check it out. The currency in the Maldives is the Maldivian Rufia. At the time we were there, 1 euro was about 16.5 Rufia and 1 USD about 15.45 Rufia. However, USD are widely accepted in hotels and tourist places. 
surprisingly, we saw mostly prices in USD rather than Rufia. And that's apparently because all taxes from hotel and tourism organization are paid in USD to the Maldivian government. During our stay there, we used everywhere credit card as it was the most convenient way of paying. We only exchanged a few euro in order to buy snack in supermarket, where prices were in Rufia. But even there, we could have used our credit card in the end. Regarding ATM, there was an ATM on both Digura and Mafushi Island. But the one in Digura didn't work, or at least didn't accept our credit card. And if you want to exchange money, you can do it mostly in supermarkets or bank, if they have one on the island you are. An important thing to know while traveling to the Maldives, and especially the public and local islands, is that the official religion is Islam. Due to that, it is not allowed to walk topless or in bikini in public places. For example, if you are on a tour, you are allowed to be topless or in bikini on the boat. But when you set foot on land, the arbor will be on a non-bikini located area. So you must have your clothes on. You will therefore find two kinds of beach, bikini and non-bikini beaches. The name is straightforward and you are only allowed to be in bikini on bikini beaches. Thankfully, you will find boards to let you know the type of beach you are on. Because the country is Muslim, you will also hear the call to prayer. But honestly, it isn't bothering at all. And for the same reason, you will see cats around. In Islam, cat is admired for its cleanliness and was a bit of animal to Muhammad. Unlike many other animals, such as dog, Islamic law considers cats ritually pure and possesses baraka blissful energy, and allows cats to freely enter homes and even mosques. One thing that we found really cool while traveling in the Maldives is that you can watch your food before entering your hotel or hotel room. That way, you do not bring sand everywhere, because boy, sand do go everywhere. On the Gora, we got a more traditional way of cleaning our food. It was so fun. And at first, we didn't know about it and thought it was just for decoration. On Mafushi, as it was more like a regular hotel, it was a more modern way, with a water hose. The Maldives is an archipelago, so it's made of tons of island and 26 atolls. To move between them, there are mostly three options. To give you some context, we will take the transportation from Mali to Digura as an example. It takes 2-3 to three hours to reach Digura by speedboat. They are daily departure at 11 am and 4.30 pm. Return boat are at 6.30 am and 1.30 pm. But be aware that time changes on Friday. So always ask your accommodation. It costs 60 US dollars per person per way. The other option are either to take a domestic flight from Mali airport to Maamigili airport with flying for 20 minutes and then take a boat to Digora for 15 minutes. That option costing 175 USD per way per person. Or to take a seaplane from Mali to South Ari Atoll platform for 30 minutes and then a boat to Digora for 10 minutes. One way, one person costing 250 USD. When we talk about the Maldives, we often see overwater villas in private island. But the Maldives are not all about that. And you also have public island. Depending the type of island you go to, your budget will be completely different. Our travel itinerary in the Maldives goes through two public islands, Mafushi and Digura. And for six days, the total budget is about 1320 USD, including excursion, food, hotel, etc. So about 264 USD per night. If we would have stayed on a private island and a luxury hotel, we were looking per night at 850 USD for half board, 950 USD for full board, or 1100 USD for all inclusive, and without any excursion. And of course, there are ways of reducing the cost of our 6 day Maldives itinerary, but then you will be much more limited in what you are doing, and we wouldn't recommend it. When it comes to food, we are mostly following a plant-based diet. 
but are open to new experiences and would be more vegetarian when we travel. While traveling through the Maldives on local island, we never had any issue with the food, we always found some option. It is true that the Maldives is a great location to eat fish and seafood, but there are other possibilities. For example, vegetable noodle, vegetable curry, or vegetable kotu. However, we would still recommend trying the masuni, which is shredded smoked tuna, or its vegan version made with pumpkin. Both are so delicious. Another thing that you must try while traveling the Maldives is the fruits. They are so yummy and delicious there, either raw or in juices. Regarding alcohol, it is prohibited to drink alcohol, and alcohol is actually banned from the country, except for resort islands and safari cruise boat. However, you can find alcohol-free beer in some restaurants and supermarkets. And finally, if you fancy a snack, you can always find some in a supermarket on the local island. As both of the local islands we visited at supermarket, it was really convenient. So those are three essential things you need in Maldives. Mosquito repellent, uh, SPF for the body and face, and SPF for your pretty lips. Mm-hmm. <laughs>